Hi, and welcome to another episode of Sony's Pro Audio Files. My name is Andy Munitz, Product Manager for Sony's Professional Audio Division. And in this video, we'll go into the specific operation and discuss the newest features of our latest UWPD wireless microphone series and focus specifically on the operation of the transmitter models. If you haven't already seen the introductory video on our latest generation of UWPD wireless microphones, and more specifically on the features and operation of the receiver, we invite you to find that video and have a look. In this video, though, we'll have a look at the transmitter's display, menu, and operational features. And as most of the menus are common to all of the UWPD series transmitters, body pack, plug-on transmitter, or handheld mic, we'll go through them on the body pack, but also mention the specific features unique to either the plug-on or handheld mic. As most of the channel setting functions will be initiated by the receiver unit, though, there are only a few things that you might normally want to change on the transmitter, but it's certainly a good idea to know about all of the menu choices available. Starting at the top left, we see an antenna symbol, which confirms active transmission. This is followed by either an L, which represents a 5 milliwatt power setting, or an H for the 30 milliwatt setting. By the way, on the plug-on transmitter, the H setting is for 40 milliwatt transmission power. Next is the audio level meter, followed by an indication of whether the unit is set for either mic or line level input. Following that is the bar graph battery icon, but don't forget the battery count up timer menu that is far more accurate. On the next line, we see the group selection that the unit is set to operate in. Again, a topic that we discuss in a separate video on channels and groups. Followed by the specific UHF TV channel and mic channel that the unit is currently set to. Briefly though, know that these wireless mics operate on vacant UHF TV channels. And within each available TV channel, nominally shown are 47 different wireless mic channels. And finally, on the bottom line, is shown the actual frequency number of the selected channel, and an indicator showing the auto gain mode the transmitter is set to by default. As well, notice the power button, a dedicated mute button with menu selectable muting modes, and by the way, notice that an orange LED will flash if the unit is set to muting mode, and plus and minus buttons for changing the menu choices. Now, before getting into the transmitter's menus, know that there are four specific transmitter configuration menus that can only be accessed when the unit is in a special and safe setting mode, preventing these changes from happening while live and actually transmitting. You can change these settings manually on the transmitter only by powering up the unit while holding down the set button. Menus such as Manual Group and Channel Setting Mode, Frequency Band, Low or High Power Output Setting, and Factory Reset then become available to change. After making any of these settings, though, the unit must be turned off and then on again to resume transmission with your new settings. So, let's go through the transmitter's menus by hitting the minus button and have a look. After the main home display, first up is the band menu. This can read 14 to 17, 18 to 21, or 22 to 25 on this 14 block model. This setting is usually set by the NFC pairing step from the receiver, but can be manually set as just described when the transmitter is powered up in safe mode. Next is audio input attenuation. Note that this menu is inactive when the transmitter is in auto gain mode. When active though, adjust this menu to best match a specific microphone to the mic preamp of the unit. I suggest listening carefully while adjusting this to get the best sound quality. Following that is the gain mode selection. This can be set to either auto gain, normal or manual mode, or 15 dB boost mode for when talent seems to always hold their handheld mic too far away from their mouth. You might find that the auto setting is a good choice though. Next is the LCF or low cut filter frequency choice. 
Depending perhaps on wind or background noise conditions, this can be set to off, low 100 hertz, mid 150 hertz, or high 200 hertz filter setting. If setting this filter, don't forget to reset it for subsequent shoots, perhaps under different conditions. Following this menu is the mic or line input selection menu. This can be handy for when getting a feed from a mixing console or other audio device. Pretty handy for when you actually need it. Following that is the RF power menu, which can be set to either low or high. Again though, this menu can only be changed when in the safe mode, when powering on while holding the set button. Again, don't forget to power cycle the unit after changing this mode for the transmitter to start transmitting again. By the way, and your results may vary, but I've tested my own units outside on their high power setting and was able to transmit to a distance of about 1,200 feet before hearing my first dropout. Next up on the UTXP40 plug-on transmitter only is the menu for turning on the 48 volt phantom power supply necessary for many condenser style mics, such as shotguns for boom pole applications. The power lock menu follows and allows for preventing turning off the transmitter by mistake. If the menu is set to lock and you want to turn off the transmitter, either set this menu back to unlock or by holding down the power button, a prompt will appear asking if you want to release the locked state. Just change the no to a yes and hit set to power down the unit. Up next, the battery running time menu, as we discussed in the video about the receiver's menu. The next menu allows you to change from the default simple menu to the advanced menu, giving you access to many additional functions that you might want to use only occasionally. Many of these are similar menus as we covered for the receiver, but with these additional transmitter-only choices. Mute setting. Pressing the mute button while transmitting simply mutes the audio from the transmitter. The mute alt setting makes it so the audio is muted by hitting the button and released when hitting it again. Changing this selection to mute hold makes it so that audio is only muted when holding down the button. PTT, or push to talk, hold, will allow audio to be output only when the mute button is pushed and will cause it to be muted again when the button is released. The disable choice will prevent the mute button from having any effect. By the way, the UTX M40 handheld mic has some additional unique settings for this muting functionality. Please have a look at the ops manual to read about those. Next is audio phase. This allows for changing the phase of a connected microphone to the UTX B40 body pack, other than the supplied lavalier. Following this is the Compander menu, as described in the previous video on the receiver's operation. Next is also a pretty unique menu called Occupancy Sense. As many new green buildings have motion detector occupancy sensors installed in many rooms to turn off the lights when everyone leaves, this menu allows for using a bit of the DSP to enable a digital filter to help prevent these occupancy sensors ultra high pitch frequency from interfering with the audio signal coming in through the transmitter's connected microphone. When set to low, a 20 kHz cutoff filter is enabled. And when set to high, a 15 kHz cutoff filter is engaged. If you encounter an odd sound in your audio, I suggest trying this filter to correct for the issue. The following menus for battery type, display mode, brightness, and factory reset are the same as that described for the receiver in the previous video. By the way, the factory reset menu is one of those menus that can only be activated when the unit is powered up in the safe mode. Finally, the transmitter's firmware build number is shown. Well, that's a pretty detailed view into the operation of our UWPD series of wireless microphones. Realize though that even with all of these custom choices, you'll mostly just scan for a clear frequency each time you use the system, sync up the transmitter to match, and you're all good to go. Hopefully this video has given you insights into the operation of these units and will help make you the master of your wireless mics. As I'm sure you realize, Wireless mics can offer real flexibility when choosing to use them, 
but without a solid understanding of both their operation and frequency selection, they might offer a bit less than the best results. And please look for our video on channels and groups for UWPD and DWX wireless microphones to complete your understanding of your UWPD wireless mic. For further information on these and other Sony professional audio products and resource downloads, please visit us at pro.sony/audio. And thanks for watching.